gather around your word. Help us, Lord, to take that word to heart. Lord, may the, the words that I speak this morning uh, be pleasing in your sight, that your people would receive life and salvation from them, and that your word would strengthen them as they go about their lives. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Uh, in the Gospels, frequently, <clears throat> what happens is Jesus uh, is around food. Uh, this is just something that, that happens in the Gospels. Uh, part of the culture of the Middle East is this very food-based culture. So there's there's people being invited. There's there's all sorts of just food table stuff that happens in the Gospels. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, Jesus had been invited to the Pharisees. There's actually about three or four times where where Jesus gets invited to the house of somebody. And he actually, uh, when he shows up at their house, he actually becomes a rather terrible guest. Uh, today, just in case you were like, going to go pray, don't worry, this your guest. Actually, most of the time when he's a guest, he's not very fun uh, for the host. Um, today, there, there's an entirely different scandal that, that's happening. And this scandal is, uh, is very, very interesting. In this culture that, that practiced hospitality, where people were being invited, where there were, were food and celebration, um, Jesus is accused uh, that the Pharisees, they say to him, this man receives sinners and he eats with them. Now, to be important in the culture, if you were important, if you had wealth, if you had something within this culture, uh, you could provide a very nice meal for sinners. You, you could give this to them. You, you could feed people who were uh, underprivileged. You could feed people who, uh, as a display of your generosity, you could give. The scandal that Jesus has this particular morning is not that he's just simply giving to people uh, who some would consider immoral or unclean in some way. It's not just a, a scandal that he's also sitting there eating with them. This this is not good. The Pharisees do not like this. The Pharisees have, have very strict, clear limitations on who you should be eating with. When you host people at a meal, when you invite someone to your house, I mean, you, you can even get this in our own culture, you, you are saying, I want you to come in if you are part of me while you are here, uh, you're family. It's the Olive Garden, right? When you're here, you're family. Um, while you're here, you are one of us. And so Jesus, in, in doing what he does, Jesus is, is saying that he accepts people who are not good. Jesus accepts people who are not good. Now, they are, oh, that's, that's a big shock there, Pastor. Um, they are unclean. If you think about what, what to be unclean, these are perhaps immoral. Immoral. The, the tax collectors, we'll get to Zacchaeus in a little bit, in a few weeks, I think. Uh, the tax collectors, these people were, were brutal. And on top of all of the money that, that was going out from one place to another, these tax collectors would go and they'd take even more. They were hated. These immoral people. If you think in your own life, who do you know who's immoral when you invite them over to dinner? I don't know. Uh, the shepherds. The shepherds were actually, uh, in Jesus' time, a, a prescribed profession. That means they did, by, by simple virtue of their profession, they were unclean. They were unclean. They had, you had the whole Old Testament, you had King David, you had this whole shepherd um, thing in the background that, that, that yes, you know, this was royalty, but by the time of Jesus, at the simple, just kind of common level and before the Pharisees, the shepherds were unclean. These people that Jesus is accepting, Jesus is taking in people who you wouldn't want to take in. Now, he does this for a reason. And the reason that, that Jesus actually goes about accepting people and, and, and bringing them in is that for Jesus, 
Repentance happens within a relationship. Repentance change happens within a relationship. Sometimes people, they get into relationships or they start kind of pursuing relationships and they think they're going to change somebody. Now, if you live life any, any amount of time, how well does that work? If you enter into a relationship and you think you're going to change the person, I, you know, you're going to do it. How, how well does that work? It doesn't work so well. It, it doesn't work when, when you, you're saying, I'm going to make this person change in order to get into the relationship. For the Pharisees, you would bring about the kingdom of God once you repented. It was a good work that you could show. So, so your repentance, uh, if you were unclean in some way, if you stopped doing whatever it was that was unclean, then you could begin to be acceptable to God. Jesus says, no, once you're inside the relationship, then change happens. Being inside the relationship with Jesus, the kingdom of heaven that, that is at hand, Jesus says, look, here, within this relationship, over the course of a lifetime, you will change. See, for Jesus, I think for us, it's easy to fix our minds on who is undeserved. And I, all of you, as human beings, we grow up with, with a certain set of uh, biases against people. Mine, mine are, are very fascinating. I, I never like to admit them. I don't like to admit the, what I, I, the people I don't like. I, do you? No, you don't either. You know, but, but you have a certain set of biases. There, there are certain people that you find to be undeserving of God. There was a story uh, a few weeks ago about a church in Florida. They, uh, they had been protesting outside an exotic dance club. And, and so they, they went there and they held up signs. Well, <laughs> the, the funny part of the story is that uh, the, the people who worked in the exotic dance club came over to the church and started protesting the church. And, and wow, that would just be such a fascinating Sunday morning if that happened here, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> just fascinating. And you see, we, we want to make others good in order to get into the relationship with Jesus. And Jesus says, no, I make the relationship happen. And then the good comes. This is, this is very important because we, we, we can take our biases and we can say these people don't deserve it. These people shouldn't be a part of it. These people are dirt. We can do this. And so Jesus responds to these people. He responds at this, this table. He responds to them by talking about sheep. And, and this is fascinating because we have a, a very nice kind of idyllic picture of sheep. Sheep, I had a girl in seventh grade confirmation in Wayside. She raised sheep for a gummy bear. And, and her quote about sheep is that sheep are mean and dumb. <laughs> you know, they're not cute and fluffy. They're just mean and dumb. This is sheep. These sheep, uh, they, the way the culture would have worked was that these the sheep, probably were community only. That if you had a hundred sheep, it would be a gathering of people who would hire a shepherd to watch over the sheep. And the shepherd would probably be somebody in the family, probably somebody less well-to-do in the family. But the shepherd, they, they, they watch over the sheep. And you get up to a hundred, that's actually quite a large quantity of sheep. I've never had to watch a hundred sheep, but I'm guessing, you know, if there are anything like kids, that would be a lot. So you have... These sheep. And in, the, in, in this culture, in this community, to lose a sheep would be a loss for everyone. We don't really have things in common like that in, in our culture. We don't have uh, things that we kind of hold together that could theoretically be lost. But for them, this would have been important. It would have been a loss for their community. And the sheep... As Jesus is talking, the sheep wanders off. The sheep goes away. And this perhaps dumb, emphasizing the dumb part of the sheep, when they go off, eventually they realize they're lost, there's something wrong, and then the shepherd has to go get them, 
and the sheep just kind of shuts down, the flocks down. And the shepherd has to carry back a heavy sheep to wherever it's going. Like the sheep, people wander far from God. Now maybe you've experienced this. I don't know if you've experienced wandering far from God. Uh, maybe you yourself have not wandered very far from God, but maybe it was your kids. Maybe your children have wandered far from God. Maybe it's a sibling who has wandered far from God. I hear these stories all the time from people who have, who have just wandered far from God. 